Hello again, viewers. I'm your host, Esther Benjamin. It's another day with your fertility specialist. I'm here with members of the IVF team at Alps Hospital and Diagnostics, Dr. Kenneth Aguda and Nosh Ruth Ogogo. And so we'll be having a conversation this morning. We're talking about the process of preparing for an IVF and for an embryo transfer, rather. Okay, so Dr. Ken, can you just give us an insight to the process of an embryo transfer? What does it look like? Yeah, thank you um, for the question. Uh, embryo transfer, incidentally, is uh, the last uh, active aspect of the IVF treatment. And what embryo transfer really means is uh, putting back the fertilized eggs into the woman's uterus. You know, the process is seamless, it's painless. Okay. It's the most painless, I mean, part of the IVF treatment cycle because it doesn't require any medication, any pain mm, relief okay. because if everything goes smoothly, uh, there's actually no even discomfort associated with it. You know, and then the, the embryo is usually loaded into uh, a very thin catheter, we call it catheter. Okay. And the catheter, the diameter may just be two millimeters. Oh. But at, really at, thin. Uh, yeah, very thin, two millimeters oh. or three millimeters, okay. you know. Uh, it's designed in such a way that uh, it can go into the uterine cavity and drop the embryos and get out of the uterine cavity without the uterus itself knowing most, it. Wow, wow, wow. So it's the most sensitive aspect of an IVF treatment cycle, okay. you know, because uh, if it's done roughly, sometimes when the uterus uh, uh, notice it, notices it, it could generate waves of contraction and uh, the embryos could be expelled after that oh. is done. So um, it's very sensitive. So you need the most stable person, most gentle, <laughs> the, most, uh, the most caring. Coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> composed. Oh yeah, composed, yeah. you know. Oh. So you could do all of that. And even the process of cleaning, the woman is meant to be cleaned gently. Yeah. So that the yeah. cervix is not excited. Wow. Yes, not irritated, I mean. Yeah. Because it needs to be as quiet as possible. possible. So um, so the woman is expected to have a, a, some urine in the bladder. I don't want to use the word full bladder because I've seen full bladder tormented a lot of women. Wow. Yeah. You just need to have urine in the, in the bladder. bladder. Okay. You know, in a, I mean, the volume that doesn't necessarily make you feel pressed you know, that you need to empty the bladder. Mm -hmm. Because when you get pressed, for instance, uh, you, you, the, the muscles of the pelvic floor get toned up mm -hmm. so they could clamp down on the urethra okay. so the urine doesn't jet out. Mm -hmm. So that way, even that contraction of the pelvic floor muscles could have effect on the cervix mm -hmm. and can make the cervix uh, very tight. Okay. And then it becomes very difficult to send in the embryos. Mm -hmm. So you need some urine in the bladder. The bladder okay. And then you just transfer the embryos and she comes down of the, 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 the operating table okay. or the embryo transfer table. And uh, she goes, continue to rest in her room for a while. And then uh, she goes home from there. Wow, it's that seamless. Yes. yes, and the whole procedure generally may just take like two to three minutes. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Two to three minutes. Oh, wow. Amazing. Yeah, if everything goes smoothly. smoothly. Uh, this is not to say sometimes they are not difficult. They could okay. actually be difficult. If you're dealing with cervical stenosis that you are not prepared for mm -hmm. or that you have not identified and sorted before going in for an embryo transfer. Okay. So, yeah, as usual, they also don't need to come with their perfumes. Okay. Because the perfume doesn't just affect them, it could affect the entire system. Yes. Because, you know, perfume is like air. It's, it's, it gets released into the air and the mm -hmm. smell stays with you for a while. Mm -hmm. And so that's a volatile organic compound. Okay. So for their own good and for the good of the system, they don't use yeah, perfume while coming to the, uh, for the embryo transfer. You know, okay. I was going to ask Nosrius to that because I, I think you converse more with those clients before yes. procedures like okay. that. So what instructions do you give them prior to an embryo transfer? Okay, so let's take it that it's only someone that has egg that has fertilized that will definitely have an embryo mm -hmm. transfer. So yes, usually after a collection, three to five days after you have embryo transfer, 
that's for someone that has fertilized egg. Because yes, it's possible to do a collection and not get any egg. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when you are scanning these clients and you are seeing the house, that's the follicle that is mm -hmm. housing the egg. And then, you know, they do ask questions like, are the eggs okay? And you're like, we're not seeing these eggs. <laughs> we're not seeing them. Yeah. We're just seeing the house of yeah. this egg. Yes, until um, egg collection is done, then they would check the embryologist to check to see if they are eggs. So yes, for someone that has given us eggs, and then these eggs fertilized, they will have embryo transfer three to five days. So like he has mentioned, information prior to that, they will need to be have some urine in the bladder. Yes, okay. you don't want them excessively pressed too, because even sometimes they will tell you they are very pressed. <laughs> By the time you are scanning, you are not even seeing so you much urine because, you know, praying for embryo transfer, they are, they are tense. Yeah, yeah too. the anxiety so, is there. Exactly. So, um, no makeup, like he has mentioned, mm -hmm. no no perfume, no strong body care. As long as they have that strong fragrance, you want them to abstain from all of that. Yes, they are not. They will be awake and they will see you scanning. Yes, because someone is scanning. So they are not sedated while... during this Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, they are seeing you they're seeing they're seeing you know you're, you're trying to scan while doing the embryo transfer mm -hmm. so the, the client is also awake to see everything that is going on and then we could also show them when the embryos are dropped into the endometrium okay so those those are your potential babies yeah. you can only <laughs> anticipate pregnancy and trust god for the best yes so these are some of the instructions that are given before an embryo transfer Yes. And then, yes, you know, sometimes when, when you've told them all this after the embryo transfer, you know, some of them, you know, they'll ask you how to walk, you know, you start. Yeah, you know, I'm going to ask, <laughs> these were just instruction <laughs> prior. Yes. What about so, instruction mm, afterwards? Because, so you, you know, see, you, I've heard people say, I, don't, I can't climb stairs. Should I climb stairs? <laughs> Should I lie on my tummy and all of that? So really crazy things, please, right? So please, what please. instructions do you give them afterwards? Okay, so they could go about their normal activities. As a matter of fact, coming down from the IVF couch, you could walk normally to your, you don't have any fear. So while we're at this walking thing, I've seen a bit, you know, about this walking. Yeah, this is in Alps now, hospitals, okay. you know, we had treated a woman from the eastern part of the country, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. who had stayed for a very long time without yeah. getting pregnant. Of course, she is already postmenopausal. Oh my God. And then after the embryo transfer, I would say, okay, madam, can I make you come down, make you go to your bed now? <laughs> Sorry, let me speak pigeon a bit. <laughs> you see, you see, wait till you talk. <laughs> make I come down. Say, no, I never come down for you. I say, they're not supposed to carry me. <laughs> you know, I say, oh yeah, now, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> we say we'll find out, you know. So we cajoled and encouraged her to Ooh. step down of the uh, embryo transfer table, yeah. and then she 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 stepped down and stood. Ooh. She refused to walk. You know, I said, "Madam, walk her now." You can't her, Sorry, can she, you? she 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 couldn't speak the real. I mean, uh, yeah, the yeah. British English, English, you know. So we have to speak the pigeon. Say, "Madam, walk her." I said, "No, I don't go walk out." <laughs> So you won't make the thing drop. I say, come on now. Oh you know, we say, no, why don't the thing not go drop? Because the cervix has a valve, yeah. you know, that prevents things from coming out just mm -hmm. uh, mm. involuntarily, you know. Yeah. And um, it's kept there by a negative suction, mm. you know, negative pressure, so up there. And but I know, no, 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 say, you go come out. You say, no, make it work. I say, okay, how I go work? I say, just yes. <laughs> Her. And then she stood up. I wish I could demonstrate oh it, you know. God. So she stood up, you know, and she was walking with her legs crocs. Oh my walking god. Walking this way, going this way. Oh man, that day we were oh full no. of love. You know, my she's just got she her, right? She's, she's trying to exactly. She's been through a lot. Yeah. So she thought when she stands, it's mm. going to drop. Yeah. You know, so no madam is not going to drop. You know? So yeah, that's one of those things. Yeah. You know? So women have all kinds of things going up in their mind. They feel you you've dropped something there, so if they stand, it's going to fall. Yeah. You know, but that's mm. not the case. Uh, Another thing again, it's um, uh, sometimes when the bladder is a little bit full, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I've, I've, we've, we've done embryo transfer in some part of the country, in Kano State, Nigeria, for instance, okay. and I noticed that uh, all the women refused to get down from the operating from the embryo transfer <laughs> yeah. table. I was like, come on, something seems to be going on here. I don't seem to understand. Mm. Yeah, because I don't live in Kano, I don't understand their socialization. Mm. So apparently, some women have told some other women. That you're not supposed to. That that uh, when you urinate after oh, embryo oh transfer, the, you are going to have <laughs> a failed treatment, treatment. cycle. Oh, you understand? Oh, oh. So how are you going to do if you don't urinate? Mm. 
you know, so they refused to come down from the operating table. Mm. And then it was, it, was, it was impeding our speed for mm. operation, okay? So we have to use a catheter to empty <laughs> the bladder, <laughs> you know, so they could just walk. So uh, you could urinate, you understand? We understand their fear. Valsava maneuver and all of mm. those things. Could, so they thought that's actually having a negative effect mm. on the em embryo that is transferred. So you could urinate, I mean, casually, mm. you know, and uh, everything is still fine, you know. What we don't want is uh, after embryo transfer, you know, uh, instructions given it, take your medications. Mm -hmm. It could be different from the next person you know, mm -hmm. but they are all luteal support medications. Okay. It could be injectables, it could be insertion, insertion uh, pessaries, yes. it could be oral, depending mm -hmm. on what your doctor feels. Yeah. And the dose also may not be the same. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. people right? have exactly. problem, inherent problem with their endometrial lining. Mm -hmm. And so they may be on uh, some heavier doses of whatever medications they are on, while others are just on the normal basic dose because mm -hmm. things seem to be all right. So the doctor judges who to give what and what dose to give. Mm -hmm. You know, my important uh, uh, um, um, counsel. counsel is no intercourse. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no intercourse. Yes. You could have intercourse and everything is fine, but because we know intercourse cause pelvic contraction, yes. uterine contraction, we want to avoid things like that. It's as, it's as bad as saying no nipple stimulation. Wow. Because when you stimulate the nipples, by whichever means, tactile, mm. uh, lips, and all of that, uh, oxytocin is produced. Mm -hmm. you know, and oxytocin causes contraction okay. of the uterus. Yes. Okay. So we want them to uh, be careful about all of those stuff. Well, no sexual activity, Abstinence. not just yeah, exactly. Yes, and one important uh, instruction for me is after, is just be happy. Mm. Mm. Listen to good music, yeah. listen to good news, uh, read, if you're a Christian, read the Bible and try to meditate on, uh, on the Word of God, mm. you know, um, and if you're a scientific Christian like me, you know. <laughs> what would you meditate on? <laughs> <laughs> meditate on the universe. <laughs> look at the stars, look at the galaxy okay. and think how mighty God is, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, things like that. Just do whatever makes you feel very happy. Yeah, so, and um, stay away from tense argument mm. because negative emotion yeah. brings negative hormones, yeah. negative energy that may have That's negative impact. impact. Of course, a study was done after embryo transfer. Those that listen to good music, peaceful music, mm. the kind they like, had more pregnancy than those that did the opposite. Mm. Okay, so that's where the bible says mary uh, a merry heart does good like yes. medicine yes. so do all of this merry 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 things you know so if the embryo is good the uterine lining uh, lining is good and you're in harmony with yourself and with god yeah i think it's a recipe for success mm -hmm. so those are some of the instructions that uh, we give don't fight <laughs> another thing please don't sit down one place oh, yeah. <laughs> I was even going to ask you, you know, don't lie, don't lie on your tummy. Is there any instruction about your you know, life? You know, sometimes you get them, you hear some of them complaining, I'm having back ache. And you're wondering, yeah, Madam, have you been lying in one position? Yes, I've just been lying on mm. my back. <laughs> you're like, I'm looking up like a corpse. You, you know? know? So, you know, you know, you, don't, you can actually assume any position, any okay. position you feel comfortable in. Change position, even if you want to change position 10 times in one sleep, you can do it as well. You can as travel people. at the same time. Yes, okay? exactly. You can go to church, you can go to mosque. You can live your normal, normal life. life. Don't just stress yeah. beyond yes. your regular. Because IVF doesn't mean you are relegated to bed or, you know, bed you rest, your yeah. bed rest <laughs> and all you of that. Just... You take life easy, yes, yeah. but you can do your regular activities. In Denmark, for instance, some of the clinics we visited visited in Denmark, you mm. just finish IVF treatment and they mount their bicycles wow. and ride Back home. home. Amazing. Mm. You know, and everything still goes smooth. Yes. It's not about all of those things. Mm. If the genetics match good uterine cavity and you are at harmony with yourself and with nature and God, chances are that you're going to have preg you're going to get pregnant. But if you lay in the same place, that is when the anxiety and all the trouble starts. Some women don't bath, don't have the, take hmm. their bath After you know, for two weeks. <laughs> They'll tell you they've not had their bath. I was like, well, I'm tired of talking about this instruction. Whatever makes you happy, Just do it. Do it. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, and yes, sometimes too, we can also tell them to avoid caffeine. Yes, when, when, you know, there's there's a particular amount of caffeine that is um, that is safe for a day. But how can one tell which amount you've taken that is actually safe enough okay. for a day? So we usually would counsel that they should, as much as possible, stay. And if they cannot, they should limit it as much as possible. Yes, no alcohol intake, no smoking. I mean, if you've waited so long for a baby, then. <laughs> Anything is worth yeah. it just to just to have a baby. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can climb your staircase because you get a lot of <laughs> that question all yeah. the time. You can climb your staircase as much as you want. So yes, as long as anything that doesn't pose as a stress, stress to you, you can yeah. actually. Some of them will ask you, "Can I drive?" Mm -hmm. Yes, you can drive. Yes, you can drive. Driving is not a rigorous exercise, so you can drive. So yes, those are some of the. And then some of them ask you okay. foods. Yes, eat healthy. Some of them will say, what kind of food can I eat now that would actually help um, achieve pregnancy with this? Just eat healthy. You, you know, for me with food, I'm not a food scientist, mm. you know, but then I've read some researches like uh, women ask a lot about pineapple and about oranges. Mm. You know, uh, uh, pineapple, for instance, has been seen, seen to elaborate some uh, substances that I've forgotten the name of the chemicals now, yeah. that is anti-inflammatory yes. and impedes the flow of growth factors and uh, stem cells that towards the uterine cavity. Yeah. And this can impede, uh, uh, can reduce the, the rate for implantation. Yeah, so they can avoid these things. And if for instance, they have read researches that because sometimes these patients are more enlightened than yeah, us. Exactly. Yeah. They read a lot. Yeah, they read a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so if you've read anything that said this food is not good, even when your doctor said this food is good, please avoid it. Because yeah. you know something with psychology, sometimes yes. when you feel something avoid is it. not good, yeah. in your mind yeah. it can actually somehow start affecting exactly. you. Because yeah. that's one thing we so, do. So, so even if your doctor say eat this or you feel it's not good, avoid the food. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's you. <laughs> if you don't take the food, nothing wrong will yeah. necessarily happen. happen. So exactly. give yourself the best chance based on knowledge of mm. what you think you've acquired yes. and whatever instructions is held that the doctor or the team has given okay yeah, so exactly. yeah food can affect it i think but mm. we should eat healthy yes amazing mm -hmm. dr ken you know you mentioned something about abstinence from sex please when are they supposed to return back to their sexual activity now it's different for different people at the okay. same time okay some women start spotting after positive pregnancy tests mm. they should avoid pregnancy until their gynecologist tell them sex. it is it yes. is okay yes you know but if everything is smooth no problem yeah you can start as soon as uh, pregnancy test is confirmed and all okay. of that there's no hard and fast rule every case is individualized even when pregnancy is advanced yes. 20 30 weeks and then your doctor make a diagnosis of placenta previa yeah. mm. stay away from pregnancy because stay any small touch yeah. can make you bleed, bleed. Mm -hmm. terribly yes no. you know so yeah so um You've been having sex all your life and then... <laughs> and even the day that you were not able to achieve, exactly. so why not, <laughs> so why not stay away from it? Exactly. Okay, so thank you so much, Dr. Ken and Nashrut. That's so much we can take now. Thank you.